Okay. All right. Virtual friends, you have an assignment now called, what is it called? Slave labor influence. Um, and it is the same papers that I just handed out to my friends here in class. Jason? No. Okay. And everybody should have um, an introduction to slave life. Okay. So I'm going to be reading through this and we're going to be discussing um, what it was like to be a slave. Um, you guys, I think, off your virtual have to click through a couple of graphs to get to the actual article. Okay. So get to the actual article if you'd like to follow along. Otherwise, be a good listener and Miss Bab, we just have yeah. questions. It's just two pages and there are only questions. No, that can't be right because I looked at it yesterday and saw it. Hang on. Don't click add response on slave labor influence when you just see it on your activity. Oh, if you just click on a picture, there's a graph, click on that picture and then you have seven pictures. The first three of them are slides and then it starts actual type. Did you find that, Joes? Okay, so yeah, don't click add response, just click on the picture. Okay, all right, so today when we left off, we talked about that the nation had got started and we had the constitution, except that the issue of slavery hadn't been settled yet, right? So now we're gonna start talking about how this is going to lead to the Civil War, a very big problem. Zeke. Um, I have a question about the Civil War. Are we the, well, we're not going to learn about the Civil War. Are we going to learn about the equipment and, like, the guns and stuff? Because that's my favorite part. We are not going to learn about specific weapons used in the Civil War. No. We're going to learn about the medical tools and stuff that cut the legs off. We are not learning about amputating people either. Nope. We're going to talk about, and so let's, let's. Yeah, that's not the Civil War. Is it? No. No. But, okay. Also. There's something about slavery. It's later after that. We're talking about, like, civil rights that happen after the Civil War is when that comes into play, when that person comes into play. Okay. So, we're going to study in, with the Civil War slavery and all of the issues that the North and South were arguing with each other about. We're specifically talking about the causes and what continued, what made the war continue to be such a long, gruesome, bloody war, and why were people so passionate about being on one side or the other? There wasn't like a, I kind of think this side and I kind of think this side. There was no middle of the road. You were either all in for the North or you were all in for the South. And so we're gonna talk about those causes and why. Why do you think it's relevant for us to study those kinds of things, like the causes of the Civil War? Gray? So that, whatever, that if one of us, when we're older, don't start one. So that we don't start another Civil War down the road. We're kind of dangerous, close to things that seem Civil War-ish right now because mm -hmm. our nation is so incredibly divided. This election made our country very very divided we sort of have a president declared but he's not inaugurated yet so it's unofficial and mr trump is fighting it so w there's still a lot up in the air with this election and the country is still divided right and we're not only divided on the election but there are other issues jason put that away okay so we study things like these historical events like the Civil War so that we can learn from our past mistakes as a country and we don't get ourselves into those kind of pickles again, right? Okay, so an introduction to slave life. Northern states in the United States began to outlaw slavery starting in the 1770s. Vermont outlawed the system in 1777, followed by Pennsylvania and Massachusetts in 1780. Now we talked about the states while you guys were away in the red zone and so vermont where is vermont it was way up in the northeast one of those little tiny guys way up in the northeast corner pennsylvania right next to new hampshire yep 
Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, all of those three are north, northeast, way up in that pokey part in the top, as far north as you can pretty much get other than Maine. Okay? So they're very, very northern states. Zeke, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, I just remembered. So I almost lost it. But one thing is that Missouri was like a really big battle scene in the Civil War because we're right in the middle. Yeah, we're going to, we will get to that. We will talk about Missouri's role because Missouri's role was kind of important. Go Missouri! Okay. Oh, you're not going to vote for Missouri here in a minute when you find out which side we were on. Oh, no. We were a southern. Yeah, we were a slave state. Okay, here we go. Um, so these very northern states, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, all of those are northeastern states way up there. Um, and they were the first ones to get rid of slavery. Okay. The Northwest Ordinance further extended the progressive anti-slavery push by northern states. The document organized the creation of five new states in the American West, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Now this calls it the American West, but Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, they're all right next to us. We're not the West, we're the Midwest, we're smack dab in the middle. But back then, the West, wasn't the west it was the wild west it wasn't the states back then okay so those were brand new states at the time okay this is only the 1700s all five were required to outlaw slavery upon their creation so these are midwest states but they're midwest states that are in the north okay ohio indiana illinois michigan wisconsin they're all kind of even with us or northern. Michigan is kind of above us and above Illinois. Um, okay. So those states in the very northeast, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, as well as these five new states kind of in the middle of the United States, but northern, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, they were all slave free. By 1827, slavery existed only in the southern states. During the 1830s, southern states became increasingly reliant on the corrupt practice of slavery. Is there bias in this article, or is this just the facts? Yes. Bias, bias. There's bi I hear somebody saying it's just the facts, and I hear somebody saying bias. No, it's bias. The first paragraph was just the facts. But when I read this first sentence, during the 1830s, southern states became increasingly reliant on the corrupt practice of slavery. Corrupt. The word corrupt is a biased word. Now, I think we all agree with this no. bias that slavery was corrupt. However, this is when I when we talk about recognizing if something is a fact or bias. To say something is corrupt is not, I mean, at this point, we would probably say slavery is corrupt, almost as if it were a fact, because we know that it is just flat out wrong. But in general, the word corrupt is more of a bias type word as opposed to a fact. Zeke. Um, this is, okay, so I live in Greenfield, and I live in Missouri, and there were, we went to this house, like, that was at Wilson Creek, it's called Wilson Creek Park, and we went to this house, and there was this old guy there, and he told us about how the, like, the house is history, and there was a family that lived there. Zeke's telling us about a house he visited in Springfield, the historic house. The battles was out in that, in that family's cornfield. And so in the first general of the Union that died in the Civil War, they brought him to that house. He was wounded and he died. Oh, wow. So he was talking about they visited like a historic home in Springfield. And it was the in their cornfield was the site of one of the Civil War battles. And a general died there in that house. They brought him into the house. to He was wounded and he died there. The family was just sitting on the front porch eating lunch, watching the battle. Okay. All right. Hang on, guys. We got to get through this. Okay. Corrupt practice of slavery. The cotton gin invented by Eli Whitney. Remember, we talked about that during the Industrial Revolution. They invented the cotton gin. Okay. Um, rapidly increased how much cotton could be produced by slaves and therefore encouraged its spread through the South. 
Meanwhile, in the north, cities like Cleveland, Ohio, St. Louis, Missouri, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Chicago, Illinois, were growing due to the expansion of factories, improved transportation, and the increase of immigrants from overseas. So we were not using slaves to produce our things. We were using factories, okay? Slavery in the South existed in many forms. Some slaves lived on small farms, while others lived on large plantations. Others lived in cities and towns. Some slaves were restricted to field labor, while others worked in the home where they cooked, cleaned, and cared for the master's family. In all forms, though, the underlying horrors of slavery were the same. Slaves were considered property because of the color of their skin. On a daily basis, African Americans were degraded, humiliated, threatened, and forced into accepting a lowly position in American society. Sam. So, what if we switch that around, and then the black people were first, and then the white people were next? What would happen then? Sam says, what if we flip it around? What if the African Americans were the little main ones that settled, and we, the white folks, were the ones that showed up after the fact, and we were the ones that were forced to be slaves? That is a fantastic way to reverse the role and think about it. But like, how would you this? feel? Because, I mean, most of us appear to be white or Caucasian. I am. Like, if the roles were reversed, how would things be different? Maybe maybe that would have never happened if they, like, I don't know. Would, would they have been? So Sam says maybe it wouldn't have happened. Maybe they wouldn't have been as judgmental of yeah. us as we were of them. Sean, what are your thoughts? Um, Very interesting, Sam. Maybe Martin Luther King wouldn't, like, did it because he wasn't the one being treated differently. Okay, so maybe Martin Luther King Jr. wouldn't have been such an important historical figure because he wouldn't have been the one fighting for rights like he was. Maybe we would have some sort of person similar to him, but a white person or that had been right. fighting for rights? Or maybe right. he still said it, but... Okay. Very interesting to think about what would happen if the roles had been or reversed. Maybe, or maybe he wouldn't be black. Maybe he'd still say that speech, but maybe he wouldn't be black. Maybe he would be, or maybe he wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, maybe we would have still had somebody that made that a very similar or same speech, but it was a white guy instead of Martin Luther King Jr. Possibly. Very, very interesting to think about. Or he still did it, but just for white. Okay, yeah. Okay. Josie, yeah. One more thing to add. Um, so, also, maybe they would be less judgmental because they are kind of the different ones. Like, there's not as many darker skinned people as there are white people. And maybe they would be less judgmental. I guess. Okay. So Josie says being the my being in the minority automatically makes you less judgmental. I might agree with that. No, because they would because you're them. automatically you don't have as many people on your side. So you don't have as much room to kind of be bossy, I guess, about things. Like you don't have as much support. Um so, and that, and that is just a fact. Like, if you look at the population of the United States, white, uh, there are, there's a larger population of Caucasian to African American. I don't know the exact numbers, but I do know that there are more white than African American. So, by just them knowing that they were in the minority, that would automatically maybe make them more accepting. Um, possibly. Um, it's just such an unfortunate situation to think about how cruel some of our ancestors were and that an actual person could be treated as property. Like this is my phone and this is my slave and this is my key to my house. And it was just like another thing that you owned. Like, can you imagine that a person was a thing that you owned and you could just tell it what to do and it had to mind you? Like, I mean, your parents probably think that about you. They hope to just tell you what to do and expect you to mind. But you're their kids. You're not a slave. And they're trying to teach you so that you can grow up and be great citizens, too. Yeah, but 
they don't threaten you. They don't, yeah, harm you. Like they don't make you live in terrible accommodations with little to no food and not let you in the main part of the house with them. Right. Like you still get to go places with them. They still take care of, take good care of you. Right. Um, Josie hand raised. Okay. So, um, also something that would be really, really horrible would be wondering how much you're worth. Like, Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine being like, here, here's two dollars for you. You're only worth that much. Whenever you're not, like you're a person, you wouldn't want to be treated like that. Exactly. I love that thought too, Josie. That's fantastic to think about what determines the slave's actual worth. My nose is itchy and I can't get to it. Okay, what determined the slave's actual worth? Okay, Sam, you're worth five bucks. Lily, you're only worth three. Why is Lily only worth three? I don't She's know. A She's a girl, Zeke says. All right, but Riley, you're worth ten. Why? Just Sam's like, what? Why is Riley worth more than me? All of a sudden, Sam was not offended when Lily, when he was more than Lily, but he was ultra offended when Riley cost five bucks more than him. Um, and let's see here, Cam, Cam, ooh. Cam is worth 20 bucks. And let's see here. DJ? It's the height of A quarter. I'm only going to pay a quarter for DJ. What about me, Sam? I don't know. But So what determines that? Like, I don't know. Was it how smart they were? Was it how hard they worked? Was it how well they listened and minded? Like, what determined it? And was what determined what you were worth to one slave master the same as what a different slave? So if this slave master says, well, this one mines really well. He does anything I say. He's worth 10 bucks. Yes. And then the other one says, yeah, but he's not very strong. I'm only going to pay you three for him. And then another guy says, well, he's really fast. I'll give you seven bucks for him. And then the other guy says, well, he is the best baseball player you got. So he's probably worth 20. Yeah. The leader in the Negro League. How much <laughs> Okay. I don't know. Who said something? But I don't know. Back in the day, they did not, they had different leagues, and there was a league called the Negro League. And Sam said, Well, I am a leader in the Negro League. It's not funny. Stop. Okay, here we go. Back on track. I wanna, I, I actually have something. Because I only brought it up because Sam loves baseball. Okay, here we go. I actually have something. I, okay, you have something. Yeah. So, um, what is like our current situation with like the Black Lives Matter thing? What if that was different if we didn't treat them bad back then? Right. So Sam says, would Black Lives Matter, this thing that's happening right now, yeah, would like, this even be a thing if we hadn't treated them badly in the past? Well, would like Black I'm Lives Matter be a thing right now if we didn't go through the Civil War back then? Of course their lives matter. Their lives would have always mattered. But right now they're so upset because they said that there was a time when their lives didn't matter. And they're just trying to say our lives do matter. We know that. We know that every life matters. Black, white, Chinese, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're from. Like every single life matters. We're all people. We're all people. We're all human. We're all on earth. We're all in it together, right? Everybody matters. But you're right. Black Lives Matter be a thing right now if we hadn't had the Civil War. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. You guys are having like the best questions. I love and that's exactly why we study this, because the things that happened a long time ago are still affecting us today. We are still dealing with the Civil War and slavery, and we see it with Black Lives Matter right Wait, now, there are people today. That are slaves right now. There are not people that are slaves right now, not legally. No, no, like no, no. The Black Lives Matter is just people like making sure that everybody has equal rights and that everybody is treated the same. No, like because slaves. now, even though slavery is not legal and people can't actually have slaves, are there still people? that have that mindset that wish they could have slaves still and that still want to treat people differently just because of 
the color of their skin, the color of their hair, their religion, or whatever. Yes. There are always people out there that automatically want to treat people differently for a random reason. Do you have any control over the color of your skin? No. The no. color of your hair, eyes, if you wear glasses, if you're short, if you're tall. But there are always going to be people that discriminate or judge you for things that you can't even control. Really Sam's okay. got another good so, point. So in England, we got we went out because of like religion, and then like so. Sam's remembering that we all left England originally because of religious reasons. Yeah, okay. but, and then so like their skin color and religion, it's not the same thing, definitely, but. It's like kind of because their skin color is making them religion was making us be less important. Right. So Sam's kind of comparing how we were being judged in England because we wanted to be a different religion and we didn't want to have to go to the church. And King George was like, yeah, we're all going to go to the same church. And we were like, no, we're not having it. And so we were being judged because I say we, not me, not you guys, but what became us the americans right we left england because we wanted religious freedom and we wanted to have our own say and we were being judged by our religion and then later down the road then those same people that didn't want to be judged by religion are now judging somebody else because of the color of their skin which is something they have even less choice about which like blows your mind like so those people back then, during Civil War times, did they learn any lessons from the settlers and being judged for religious reasons? No. no, and they made that same mistake, which led to the Civil War. And if you look at our nation right now, we're judging each other for a variety of reasons. Still, religion is still a way that people judge each other. Color of skin is still a way that people judge each other. Um, there are countless ways that people are judging right now. And... At the end of the day, do we have any right to judge another person? No. We really don't. Kaylee, yeah, I see your hand raised. Um, I, I don't think, I think people should look at it the other way. Like imagine if they were like Chinese or like black or something and think about how they would be treated. Cause they like just think, like they need to think about it if they were not American. More like Chinese or black or something, and like mm -hmm. realize what it's what they're actually like treating them like. That's the thing. People don't think before they act. Yeah. Exactly. People don't. They just get an idea and they say something. And Josie, what you just type, treat people the way you want to be treated. That's like the golden rule. Like. That is the golden rule. And that really is like the bottom line. Like every day, all day treat somebody the way you want them to treat you and if you do that and if you always put others first and take care of anybody it doesn't matter if you like them or not they're still a person they still have feelings um you don't have to hang out with them love them be best friends with them but treat everybody decent and don't be judgy um but so many grown-ups teenagers young adults old adults grandparents very judgmental and that was they were raised in a different time when people weren't as accepting um but if i teach you nothing else like accept each other respect each other like we have to have that because right now there's so many people that argue about too much stuff like we have to be the people that make that change right that. okay yeah the protesting wouldn't be happening if people didn't well the protesting wouldn't be happening if they thought before they started acting because I feel like, yes, they do matter, but along with white lives matter, they're still being racist to other kinds of colors, aren't they? Yeah, there's, there's still a lot of racism and it's not just whites versus blacks. Um, it's blacks versus whites and it's at pretty much every race, there's somebody out there that has something against pretty much any race out there. There's still, I mean, there was World War II later, way, way, way later. We'll talk about that towards the end of the year where it was um, the Germans were against the Jews. And like there are still people against people that are Jewish. 
And some people are Jewish because it's a religious choice. And some people are actually like born Jewish. Like it's your like culture. And so like they were being um, murdered just for being Jewish. Um, horrible situation, um, which led to another horrible war. Um, but yeah, there's, there's still tons of um, racism for all kinds of reasons right now. Um, Josie. Um, I think that it's a good thing that it happened, not necessarily like with everything that it, it's not good that it happened, but it's good in that it, it it's like um in science, I guess. Um, if, if you didn't have one thing, you wouldn't have the other. Like if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't our country wouldn't have learned a lesson. They probably would have just been, yeah. Agree, Josie. So this is why it's so important that we do study social studies and history so that we can learn from those mistakes that we made. Um, just like you guys learn from mistakes you make every day. Like sometimes it's like a little thing like, oh, I put the wrong answer on a test. Well, now I'm always going to remember the right answer because I missed it on the test and whatever. Or maybe you're making a re helping your parents make a recipe at home or helping build something at home and you mess it up. And because you messed up, then you won't forget it. And you're going to remember the right way from then on. And that's exactly right, Joe. Because this war happened, we should be able to remember not to judge each other. But somebody didn't pay attention in history class, and now everybody's really judgy again. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is pay attention to these things that we're studying so that we don't, your generation doesn't keep making these same mistakes and there are i say your generation there are plenty of people in every generation that are accepting and non-judgy and and make the great choices and treat each other with kindness and respect at all times there are people in every age group that are very accepting and there are people in every age group that are very judgy and racist still and it's sad so my thing to you guys is we're studying this for a reason take it to heart learn from it and exactly what um, you guys said golden rule treat each other the way you would want to be treated 100% okay um, we've got to stop here today you guys are having a fantastic conversation we will pick this up exactly right here tomorrow we will finish this tomorrow and then we're going to go into the textbook as well the social studies textbook so just pause this we didn't get through everything today but we in the classroom have to pack up because they have to go to specials okay so you guys don't have any there are questions that go with this if you look at the assignment it says read the thing and answer the questions you don't have to do that yet because we didn't get to it today so you guys are done for the day virtual friends um, and then we'll just see you tomorrow at 8 again for reading and um, but then we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and hang up because I've got to get them packed up to go grace yes ma'am um, I can't make it at 8 but I like it's because I have a meeting with Miss Beckett, but I'm probably going to be on every other time. Okay, that's fine, Grace. Um, yeah, I know you have a time when you're going to be up here with Miss Beckett, so that's fine. Um, or meeting with her virtually or whatever. But yeah, that's fine. And um, if you don't make the meeting live, like I'll have it posted on Seesaw for you to watch back okay. as well. All right, just make sure you look at the one that says Babs Blue Jays at home or whatever. Okay? Okay. All right, um, Kaylee. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, like this is kind of like an early notice. I might not be here on Thursday because my sister has a doctor's appointment and my mom has to bring her. Nobody's gonna be home to watch me, so I might okay not be half of the time, but I'll probably be there half of it though. Okay, that's fine. Any meeting that you're not on, um, I'll post a recording in Seesaw so you can go back and at least watch the recording of what we all talked about. Okay. All right, guys, you guys have a great afternoon, evening, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye. Bye. Did you have a question? Okay. Hold on, I'll meet really quick. Yeah. Uh, um, have you played Among Us? No. Do you have a phone? No. Um, I've played Among Us because I have a phone. But you, you should ask your parents for something like I have. I'm not allowed to call or text. It's just for games and music.
Because I get my parents' hand-me-down phones. You should ask your parents for that. Sounds good. I don't know why I told you that, but I just I just wanted to. Okay. Bye. Bye.